Bulls Nation. Welcome to the second episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly. We have a lot to discuss this week on the Chicago Bulls, and it's overall been a very negative week for the Bulls players and team, and it shows. But hopefully with more optimism and with more game time under our belt, next week will be a better week for the Chicago Bulls. But we'll focus about next week later in the video. Let's talk about the Chicago Bulls Weekly in this video. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show, and welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a Chicago Bulls weekly update for the Chicago Bulls as we discuss the start of the season for the Chicago Bulls, the goods and the bads, the uglies and the... I guess not so ugly things that have happened with the Chicago Bulls. I'm going to give some uh, player of the week awards, some most improved awards, bench awards, stuff like that, that hopefully we can see picked up within the next few weeks with some better results. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on. Let me know in the comments below. Overall, what did you think about this week for the Chicago Bulls? Because overall, I thought this week was a pretty negative week for the Chicago Bulls. Now, obviously, the excitement of starting the league up once again, having our first regular season game and kicking on from there was very exciting. In the start of the week, I was extremely hyped to see our team play. However, their performances on the court did not live up to the hype that was brought onto them this season. Now, to go off what we based this week, this week, we were 0-3. In the regular season, we lost to the Atlanta Hawks, 124 to 104. We lost to the Indiana Pacers, 125 to 126. And we lost to the Golden State Warriors in heartbreaking fashion, and I'm still not over it, 129 to 128. The performances for the Chicago Bulls this week were not particularly great. Of course, the Atlanta Hawks, we simply gave no effort. We gave no desire to win the game, and we ended up trying I guess to give an excuse that it was the first game of the season the Atlanta Hawks came out ready they came out firing on all cylinders and the Chicago Bulls was hit and miss and the energy is what made us hit and miss in the second game against the Indiana Pacers our performance was slightly improved however the, st the things that were complaining about in the first game got carried over to this game and it was more on the defensive side the screens the ability to guard the paints all these things help defense were not presented in the Indiana Pacers game and that is what resulted in another big loss for the Chicago Bulls. The third game against the Golden State Warriors, much improved performance, much better help defense, good paint defense. Something I didn't mention in my game reaction was we screened a lot better. And thank you to the person that mentioned that to me because in the heat of the moment, I forgot all about how good the Chicago Bulls screens in that game. Against the Indiana Pacers, we were the ones that were getting screened out of every play. We did the same thing to the Golden State Warriors. However, not managing runs, not stopping runs, ended up leading us to a very heartbreaking buzzer beater to the Golden State Warriors as they take a win against us. And that was the Chicago Bulls week. There's so, there is so much to talk about. There is so much to talk about. Obviously, this is not a very good week for the Chicago Bulls. But again, in the Chicago Bulls weekly, we need to take a little bit of optimism in the negatives. The optimism here is game by game, we have gradually improved in our performance. And that is something that you have to take into consideration. A lot of people feel like we should have won in, against Golden State. And knowing what I said and what other people have wrote in my comments, a lot of people agree with me in saying that we probably should have won this game. And it was very heartbreaking to lose it. So that's a positive we have to take. In our future games, we have two games against the Wizards and the Bucks coming coming up. We have a lot to discuss in those areas because the Wizards have not had a good start to their season either. They are struggling once again. So it's time to see what the Chicago Bulls can do. In the actual standings in the NBA, we currently sit dead last in the conferences and dead last in the, the standings for East and West. We are very, very, very much struggling and we have definitely lost by a lot compared to other teams. The teams that are also 0-3 are the Detroit Pistons and the uh, the the Washington Wizards in our in our Eastern Conference. We have the Washington Wizards twice. We need to try and get one win out of those, and then we could we could try and kick on from there. The Chicago Bulls have a lot to discuss. 
Let's move on to individual performances. Let's move on to some awards that I'd like to give to the Chicago Bulls players. The Chicago Bulls players, obviously a lot of people don't necessarily deserve rewards after the performances they've had. The first thing I want to say, the negative, the negative award, the player that needs to improve the most. Now granted, this week has had a lot of inconsistencies in performances, but I guess the person that I need to kind of give a little bit of a... It's unfortunate that I have to do this, to be fair. The person that I think needs to improve leading into next week, the must-improve player, I really don't... I, I think it has to be Wendell Carter. Again, two out of the three games, we could see there's so many points in the paint, and he had very, very, very underwhelming performances on the offensive side and the defensive side. Now, that's not to say he's the only player that needs to improve, but I think he's the one that you watch in these games, and people are saying... He needs to improve. Now, the first game against the uh, Atlanta Hawks, he didn't have a great game defensively. He didn't have a great game offensively. He got bullied. They got they got lobs in the paint. He was nowhere to be seen on in terms of uh, rim protection. Indiana Pacers were the same. He got bullied in the post. He got screened a lot, and he ended up getting knocked out of plays. And I think in both areas, Wendell Carter knew he had a bad game. But against the Golden State Warriors, this is the positive side because he had a tremendous game. And again, the, the Warriors play small ball. And I think Wendell Carter, when he's versing teams that like to play small ball, Wendell Carter will be the better center, in my opinion, against them. I really thought in this game, Wendell Carter had his best game I've ever seen from him. And that is a good start. But of course, the two games that he had poorly nullifies the good game that he had. But again, we are all very optimistic about Wendell Carter after that game. And that is the type of performance we need to see from Wendell Carter consistently to try and get that potential out of him for future years. If we can't get that performance out of Wendell Carter consistently, then we will see um, potential not being reached from him. He's set the bar, try and keep the bar at that level. Now it's time to, to give my sixth man award, the best player on the bench for these games in the Chicago Bulls season. Now, unfortunately, there were a lot of players that did have very inconsistent performances. Some of these bench players didn't play all three games, but there is one person that stands out to me as the best bench player for the Chicago Bulls this week. And it's someone that I haven't mentioned a whole lot in the game reactions or the game reviews. And it's someone that I think should deserve a lot of credit because he de he's developing into a new role and his name is Otto Porter Jr. Now many people might not like Otto Porter Jr. Many people don't rate him at all. Many people say he can't stay healthy but for this specific week of the Chicago Bulls weekly Otto Porter has been the most consistently good bench player on the Chicago Bulls. Now Sadaransky has come in and had good games. Had nine assists one game. I don't really think Sadaransky had too much of a good game against the Warriors. He also People like Chandler Hutchinson, good game against the Warriors, didn't have a good game against the Hawks or the Pacers. Otto Porter has consistently scored over 10 points in every single appearance off the bench. And that is something that we need to see. We need to see more scoring off of the bench. We need to see more defense off of the bench. Otto Porter also had a good rebounding week for the Chicago Bulls. So I'm very, very happy with his performances off the bench. He's developing into a bench player. Patrick Williams clearly is going to be the number one guy off the, off the starting for the rookies for the Chicago Bulls. He's going to be starting every game most likely because he brings something to that starting lineup that maybe the bench doesn't necessarily need. He brings defense, he brings energy, and he brings youth, and he brings potential. Otto Porter, he brings good scoring, he brings good rebounding, he is a very professional, modernized player, but he isn't the future for the Chicago Bulls. And what he's been doing off the bench, even if this is his last season on the Bulls, or his last, or he's having, he's gonna have more seasons on the Bulls. Otto Porter has done a phenomenal job in adapting to a bench role and doing a good job on the bench. Now, of course he wants to start. Most players want to start, especially on a team like the Bulls that are not necessarily great. But Otto Porter is making a name for himself off of that bench, and I think he deserves the six-man award for this week. Fair play to Otto Porter. He's done a very good job this week. And our player of the week, ladies and gentlemen, now... There are two ways you could go with this. You could go with the phenomenal performance of the week, which was Zach Levine with 33 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists. Or you could go with the most consistently good player this week, which was Larry Markkinen, who consistently had 16 points, 23 points, and I believe he had um, another 20-point game in that stretch as well. So what do you guys want to do? That is where I'm going to, I'm going to I guess, 
divide opinion here. What do you guys think? Because Zach Levine has had a good week as well. But consistently wise, Zach Levine has not been our best player, which is why I'm going to give it to Larry Markin this week. Larry Markin over the course of the week has been our best player. He's gotten two out of my three player of the game awards. So I think it's only fair to say that Larry Markin is the player of the week. Now, even when Zach Levine had his 33 point game, Larry Markin had 23 points and seven rebounds. I think it's fair to say Larry Markin is having a very, very, very good start to the season. Um, of course, we didn't end up winning any of those games, so you can't say that the team overall has had a good start to the season. But I think Larry Markin is trying to bounce back off a very difficult year, and so far, he's having a good job of that. He's cutting to the paint. He's getting open layups. He's putting people in the post. Is there still work to do? Absolutely. There's always going to be times where when Larry Markin falls over in the post and it's frustration. There's always going to be times where you pass out of the post into a turnover. Frustration. But it's a work in progress. He's a young player. He's adapting to a new offense. He hasn't been in the post very often in his career. He's mainly been a pick and pop type of player. He's doing a lot more on the offensive end and he's doing a very good job at that. So credit where credit is deserved. I think he's going to be my player of the week for the Chicago Bulls. And the tally continues now. I'm going to keep a tally of all the player of the weeks, all the six mans of the weeks and all of the must improve players. And we wait and see exactly who's going to have a good season for the Bulls in my eyes personally. And of course, in your guys' eyes, if you want to write who you think in the comments below, and who is having a good season and having a bad season. It's, just, it's things like this that I think makes it more of a fan opinion compared to what analysts say or pundits say or what ESPN say. And all of those are valid points, of course. They are highly credible, highly respected um, sources. But I feel like it's, a, it's okay to spread different opinions. It's okay to spread um, what your beliefs are on the Chicago Bulls, what you think is good, what you think is bad, what you need to improve on, what they need to improve on. Things like that. The more of that I like, I see on the YouTube comments or anywhere really on Chicago Bulls channels, the better it is because at the end of the day, the people that support the Bulls the most are not the analysts and they're, they're not the pundits. It's the Bulls fans. We see what we see. We know more than what these people say. So hopefully in those areas, the Bulls maybe listen to these, maybe take these things into consideration, take some of these things under their belt and perform better next week. So... That is the results. That is the awards I'm giving for the Chicago Bulls. Our next two, our next three games for, I guess, the week games that we have for next week. I guess a little bit of a game uh, next week preview. We've got the Wizards tomorrow. We've got the Washington Wizards again. And then we've got the Milwaukee Bucks. That is this week for the Chicago Bulls. And then, of course, we have to wait and see how we do this week for the Chicago Bulls or next week, whatever you guys want to call it. This is a preview of last week. So I'm, that's going to end it here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the Chicago Bulls and to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on if you'd like to see more videos like this. I do post Chicago Bulls on a very regular basis. I can't necessarily say it's daily because sometimes I do miss a day here and there. But... It's very, very consistent, and hopefully you guys enjoy the Chicago Bulls videos. Let me know what you guys are thinking for next week. What is our record going to be? Who's going to be the most outstanding performer? And just what would you guys like to see out of the Bulls next week? Very negative start to the regular season, but we do have some winnable games. Again, the Wizards are a team that have not won a game yet. To say that we can't beat the Wizards is... I guess a little bit naive. We do have a chance to beat the Wizards at least once, and it's up to the Bulls to go and get their win. If you're that hungry to win a game, then go and win the games. It's as simple as that. Have a wonderful day, Bulls fans, NBA fans. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls weekly. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Take care and peace.